Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's Quick Tips. No-nonsense random tips that I think you might find useful. Maybe. In this Quick Tips, I'm going to look at something brand new from Logic, and that's the new Stereo Pan. OK, I know it's been covered a lot already, but stick with me, because I'm going to share with you some ideas you might find helpful in using the Stereo Pan creatively. <laughs> First off though, let's briefly go through why Logic have added this new feature to the channel strip and how to use it. With the previous pan dial, it wasn't a true stereo pan and it was more of a level control, balancing the stereo signal from one side to the other. To accurately pan a source in stereo from left to right, you needed to load Logic's direction mixer. This was fine, but I found even though I knew I needed to use it, I'd rarely go for the plugin. Panning is something you want to do quickly and then move on. Well, now you can, because everything you need to truly and accurately pan is right there above the channel fader. So we can now access the different panning options from a channel strip by either right clicking or control clicking on the pan pot you want to work with. The options are balance, which is perfect for mono sources and stereo if you want to simply leave the part untouched or balanced like you would before. Stereo pan is similar to having two pan pots the way a stereo channel strip is in Pro Tools. This allows you to now place the position of the stereo signal across the stereo field rather than just rebalancing it. You can even adjust the width of the stereo signal by making it wider or thinner. The third option, which I'm not going to discuss, is binaural, which is best experienced on headphones. So, the way you manipulate stereo pan, which I found a little bit fiddly to start with, I have to say, is to click the center of the dial and drag down or up to pan left and right. To change the width of the stereo signal, click inside the green bar and drag up or down to adjust the width. You can even grab the little white handles to move them around independently. That's it. That's how you manipulate the stereo pan dial. But what applications does this dial have? That's the important question. Well, of course, in terms of panning, it's endless, but I'm going to show you a few ideas that might spark your imagination and help you to come up with some creative ways of using stereo pan. OK, so let's get underway. The first thing I want to show you is how stereo pan can help clear out the center of a mix, but at the same time give you the ability to create some unique pad sounds. We've all been there working away and wanting to find some kind of stereo pad. If you're like me, I'll sometimes be dead lazy and go through presets, find something that works and then move on. Trouble is, everyone else has access to patch 101 from whichever virtual instrument you're using. So here's a good way of creating an almost unique pad sound that is clear of the center and panned correctly across the stereo field. So, I've loaded three pads that I've picked pretty much at random and selected stereo pan on each channel to do three things. Pad one is off to the left, pad two is off to the right, and pad three has the width reduced so it's closer to a mono signal and is then automated across the stereo image going back from left to right as the music plays. So let's quickly take a listen. As you can hear, I've created a new pad sound that is just about unique and has the advantage of being out to the sides, gently bleeding back into the center. The more mono sound on pad three automating across the image helps to keep the pads moving. The great thing here is this, I'm not only creating a new sound, but by doing it this way, 
I'm leaving room in the middle of the mix for mono sounds, kicks, basses, vocals. You know the sort of stuff. For the purpose of demonstration, there's one other quick thing that I want to show you before I move on. It's a cool feature that allows you to flip the stereo signal. Say you have a sound that has different audio parts on either side, one sound on the left, one on the right. By holding command and clicking in the center of the pan knob, you can quickly flip the signal. This is a great time-saving feature if you want to hear what the stereo signal sounds like reversed. Let me show you what I mean. All right, just for kicks, let's take this pad one step further. I'm going to send my pads to two different buses loaded with different delay designer settings. I'm going to stereo pan one to the left and the other to the right. The left delay bus is a 16th note filtered delay and the right bus an 8th note filtered delay. I've not gone overboard because this is a demo and you'll come up with far more creative ideas than me. So pad one is sent to the left delay bus, two to the right and pad three is sent to both so the delays are triggered as it pans back and forth across the stereo image. I'm doing this for two reasons. Feeding the pads to different delays allows for greater interest and movement and panning the buses allows me to leave the center of the mix relatively clear. This is a great way to get creative with stereo imaging, as well as ensuring your mix stays solid and punchy in the center. The possibilities are endless. The last thing I want to show you is something that will help your mixes become more focused. One thing that can often cause a mix to become cluttered is bass sounds from virtual instruments that are too heavy across the stereo field. I'm referring here to sounds that you would only want to hear in mono. Sometimes even mono sounding bass presets have subtle stereo delay or reverbs that aren't really heard but can cause the mix to lack focus. So the way I used to solve this was to load the gain plugin and click the mono button, placing the sound center stage. Now though, I don't need to do that. I can simply switch the pan pot to stereo pan and then reduce the width of the signal to mono. This is a simple trick that I'll be using a lot on sounds from virtual instruments that I want in mono. It's a subtle thing, but it will improve the sound of your mixes, making them much more focused. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please do subscribe to my channel or even visit my website, masteringinlogic.com, where you can sign up and grab your free mastering guides and much more. Thanks for watching and happy mixing and mastering. Darren.